It's working. Right. A curve has equation y equals 3x cubed minus 7x plus 2 over x. Look, they've, they've done the same thing again. It's kind of a very similar question, isn't it? To the one we differentiated before. And in the same way, before we do anything, we need to think of this. It's 3x cubed minus 7x. Now, 2 over x. That should be easy to write. But a few of us made a mistake with that. It's 2x to the minus 1, isn't it? It's 2 times 1 over x. So it's 2x to the minus 1 when we write it in index form. Verify that the curve is a stationary point. Well, we should read this question and it should immediately trigger in our mind. That says we're looking for dy by dx equals 0 as a stationary point. So that's what the question is all about, finding where dy by dx equals 0. It did say verify it. Well, let's find dy by dx. That would be uh, 9x squared minus 7. Now, this is, we're going to be careful with this, haven't we? Differentiate 2x to the minus 1. That's going to be <coughs> minus 2x to the minus 2. So there we are. Now, this question said, verify that it has a stationary point when x equals 1. I would, I would like to think that at this point, really, we take this equation, we'd write it as 9x squared minus 7 minus 2 over x squared equals 0. We'd multiply through by x squared. It's a stealth quadratic now in x to the 4. We'd do a substitution, we'd factorise it, and we'd find that one of those roots was x equals 1. That's more than 5 marks worth, having done this already. But that's what I'd like to think we might we might want to do. When it says verify, that actually just means we now need to sub in x equals 1 and check it gives an answer of 0. So if x equals 1, dy by dx is 9 times 1 squared minus 7 minus 2 over 1, and 9 minus 7 minus 2 does equal 0, therefore stationary at x equals 1. Do you know what's important in all of this? This bit. And this is kind of the minimum you can get away with. What we've done, we have to draw a conclusion from this. We have to actually clearly show that the reason that we've done this is that we knew that we had to sub in x equals 1 and show that it was equal to 0. So it may feel like a pointless thing to do, but at the end of this we must make a conclusion. We must write so there's a stationary point when x equals 1 to show that we, there was a reason for what we just did. Part 2. Determine the nature of this stationary point. Again, it's going to be important that we clearly state what we've done at the end of this, so we're going to have to differentiate again, because we know that's how we find maximum and minimum points and determine them. Uh, what are we going to get? 18x. The minus 7 is going to go to 0. And then this bit... We're going to bring the minus 2 down to make it plus 4, x to the minus 3. Now what matters is what this is doing when x equals 1. So if x equals 1, this is going to be 18 plus 4 over 1 cubed, so 18 plus 4, which is 22. And now the most important thing that we're going to write in answering this question, <coughs> which is bigger than zero. And it's only because that was bigger than zero that we can say that it's a minimum. Okay? But that, that's really important. We, we could get away without writing that it's 22. The important thing is that we've shown that the second derivative is bigger than zero. So we have to actually state that clearly. If you didn't write bigger than zero, then you wouldn't get the mark for it. You have to, you have to state that it is bigger than zero. Right, part three. Um, the tangent to the curve at this stationary point meets the y-axis at the point Q. Find the coordinates of Q. Well, it's a slightly odd question, and the thing that you needed to spot that not everybody did spot, is that this was a stationary point. 
Now, what does a stationary point, what's the tangent to a stationary point look like? It's a horizontal line, isn't it? Because it's a stationary point. So whether it's a minimum or a maximum, <coughs> the tangent is a horizontal line. Right. So that actually means, wherever, wherever this point is, right, it's at x equals 1, isn't it? I don't know what the rest of the curve looks like. But we've just established that there's a minimum when x equals 1. And we want to know where does the tangent meet the y-axis. That's what it said, wasn't it? So, um, the x-coordinate of q is pretty easy. It's zero, isn't it? Because that's, that's on the y-axis. So the x-coordinate is zero. What we don't know is what is the y-coordinate of it. We need to know where this minimum point is. So the minimum for part three... when x equals 1, and if x equals 1, y equals, what was the y equation? 3x cubed minus 7x plus 2 over x. So 3 minus 7, is that plus? Plus 2 divided by 1, which is minus 2. Oh, so my diagram is rubbish, isn't it? Um, so we've got our minimum point at 1 <coughs> minus 2. And unfortunately, quite a few of the ones that are marked have that as their final answer. But that wasn't what the question said. It didn't say where was the minimum point. It says where does the tangent from the minimum point meet the y-axis. So Q is the point 0 minus 2. And that's what we had to do. Can I alter my diagram to make it look nice? <laughs> There we go. Right, now I look up. Except it was all the